All right, welcome back to the shop. So for this video, I am gonna be uh, disassembling this transmission. Uh, this is out of a Cat 140M motor grader. Um, I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to video because I'm in kind of a hurry to get it apart and you know setting up the cameras and you know getting the shots and stuff it takes a lot of time it it'll add a couple of hours to uh to my job here but i'm going to try to get as much of it videoed as i can um it's kind of a cool transmission it's not set up you know like a typical um, transmission like caterpillar usually has this is out of a uh, 637 scraper you know we have uh planetaries and and just pack clutch packs and stuff they're easy, easy you just unstack them you go through change out all the bad stuff and you restack them this one's a lot different it actually has three separate shafts inside and those three se separate shafts contain all the stacks of discs and uh, it takes a lot of kind of special equipment to get it apart um, I, I might end up making a couple pullers and stuff that I might have to make just to get this thing apart so we'll see how that goes uh, it'll be my first time pulling one of these uh, tearing one of these down and uh, we'll see how it goes all right, so before I get started, I did set up the time-lapse camera, so um, hopefully I'll be able to do a pretty decent video on this. Um, one thing that's nice about this Caterpillar transmissions, Caterpillar stuff, um, I can go into SysWeb and print up this disassembly procedure, and it's you really do need it. I mean, you could just go and rip and tear at this thing, and I've done that before just out of necessity, and sometimes you find a spot where you just cannot figure out how to get something apart. And I've actually broken some parts inside of components before trying to get them apart. So I will follow this. You'll probably see me in the video looking at this almost intently. I'll, I'll just do it step by step. It's the best way to do it, especially on the reassembly, um, just to make sure you don't get anything backwards or anything wrong. But on the disassembly, um, you know, transmissions I do a lot of, like a 735 transmission, something like that, I can, I can take that apart without the paperwork. Um, putting it back together, I do follow the paperwork, uh, the assembly instructions. Um, but this one here, since it's my first time, I'm going to follow them. Um, just step by step and uh, that way I'll get it apart without any problems. All right, so they steam cleaned the transmission for me. They cleaned it all up real good. So I assume they drained the oil. Uh, the first step was to pull this yoke out. Uh, I pulled it out and I could see a bunch of oil and the oil's leaking out. So now I've got to lift it up with the crane. Uh, we'll drain all the oil out and then we can uh, carry on with disassembling this thing. So there we go. They did not drain it. I just assumed they would. Um, you can see in the oil here, you can see the clutch material floating around in there. It's like a bronze kind of goldish color. Um, you can smell the clutch material in there too. So I'm pretty sure what we're going to be looking at is, uh, you know, just a set of bad discs, you know, with a pack. So it's always fun trying to figure out the like weight and balance and kind of how to flip flop something new around, especially when it's like shaped so weird. It shows in the book to put uh, some of these stands under it to hold it up, uh, but she's sitting nice and flat. She's sitting good, um, just how she is. I'm not sure why they say that, but it's cat, you know. They always have extra steps that you probably don't need to do. You know, on the first one, I'll be doing stuff that I probably could get away without doing. Um, you know, if we look at like the 735, 740 transmissions or the 637, 657 transmissions, um, you know, after doing one or two, you learn a lot of shortcuts, stuff that you don't have to do that Cat says to do. They, they kind of go step by step, like a little too far. But uh, anyways, so next off, um, I already had this yoke out. I just pulled it out. 
Anyways, so when I pulled this out, just go back. Uh, might be in the time lapse. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it had this snap ring inside here that holds this on. It was kind of a bear to get out, sort of rusted in, and it's kind of a weird spot that it has to come out of. Um, actually, you know what's weird? Okay, so the book said to remove the snap ring, pull the yoke. I didn't even pay attention to it, but all you have to do is pull the yoke. The snap ring just holds this plug in place that has a seal behind it. So yeah, I had to pull the snap ring later just to get the change of seal before I go back together. But to pull the yoke out, all I had to do was pull it out. See, sometimes it doesn't pay to go step by step. Um, sometimes it'll screw you up a little bit. But like I said, it's my first one. So if I do one of these again, um, then I'll know. So anyways, I mean, now you'll know for watching the video. All right, so I got the, got the plate out, um, and then there was a there was a set of clutches and discs back here. Uh, they all looked really good. Pulled here's the plate that goes on there. Pulled that off, and then uh, all the discs and the clutch or discs and plates and the hub. I've removed those, uh, so that's already there. Now I just need I need to flip it back over, um, put this end down, and then I can start. I can pull the cover off the back and get the uh, other the gear sections out. So there's the cover, I just lifted it off, and look at all this fun stuff inside. Well, sometimes I wonder why I do this, huh? There's a lot going on in there. So like this has a clutch pack in it, there's a clutch pack in here, there's a clutch pack in here. Uh, there might be a clutch pack in there, I don't know. Here, back right here is our bra, I can see it right now. This clutch pack here, you can see how it's burnt. Um, that's where we're gonna find our problem. Uh, classic tail, tail on these things. Uh, we got a clutch pack in here. So I actually have to make a bar to be able to hook two, like two of these at once. And you gotta lift them out in sequence kind of together. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain. You know, we'll pull these out and then we'll start taking them apart. All right, so these two carriers are gonna get lifted off at the same time. Uh, my next thing is I have to pull this, this suction tube out, um, out of the way, and then I pull these two um, seal manifolds off. And then I'm, they have a part that they sell, which is like a bar that goes across, and it bolts to here and bolts to here. So you can lift these two off simultaneously. If you look at the way that the gears are all meshed up, these two are gonna to have to come up together, obviously. And then this one will clear this, this um, section here and it doesn't even touch this other section so it'll be fine there so that works out good for me that this one comes off first um so that way i can dig into it and see what's what we have in here so i can get these parts ordered um you know with all these parts shortages lately um i'm hoping that it's not going to be a problem getting what we need 
Yeah, and I've got to get with the owner too to find out if he wants 100% rebuild on this thing or if he just wants me to fix the problem and just analyze everything. You know, if everything looks good. I mean, the variants, everything, they look beautiful. This thing has about 8,000 hours on it. Um, so I got to find out if he wants every bearing changed, if he wants all the seals, the clutch seals, everything else, piston seals changed. Um, then that's fine, we'll go that route. But if he just wants me to fix the problem and then just make sure that nothing else looks bad, then that's what we'll do. And so anyways, that's gonna be my goal. Get these two off and get this apart down to here um, so I can see what's inside that hub there so I can find out what I need to order, get those parts coming um, just in case it's gonna take a while to get them. All right, so instead of you know spending $600 on the tool from Cat, um, I had this um, EMT mounting rail stuff laying out back that came off of something uh, it was in the scrap pile so I cut it the length and was able to bolt it to each of the shafts and it even had this bracket on there which is cool it's one of those little sliding brackets and I can adjust that for uh, you know center gravity if I need to for pulling it out I should be fine but when I go back in if it wants to hang one way or the other I'll be able to adjust it right here and then that way it'll hang straight make it easier to put back in when the time comes so let's pull it out all right, yeah, my bracket's working good. It, uh, pick them both up. Just sort of jiggle them a little bit to get them out okay. Now, one issue I'm having with my crane, these IMTs, they're great cranes, really nice. But for the electrical, you know, it's got the rheostat trigger you can squeeze. Here's the controller for it. And see where it melted right there? I was using it last week and it just, poof, a bunch of smoke comes out. I've had five of these cranes over the years on different trucks and whatever. And every once in a while, this stupid controller will just burn out. And that's what controls your feathering. So you don't have just full up and full down or whatever. It's controlled by this trigger right here. And so now it's stuck on full out. And I just looked on IMT's website and IMT wants a thousand bucks for that stupid thing now. We used to buy it for like 200 bucks or whatever. I mean, they had to give them to you free because they seem to burn out for no reason. So IMT, other than like your cranes are great, your trucks are great, but that controller sucks. And you should just give us replacement ones when they burn out until you can make one that doesn't burn out all the time. So anyways, right now I'm stuck kind of, got to be very careful with this because I do not want to drop these gears. So I've got to be real careful right now with my controller so I don't bounce it and, you know, break them loose and drop them. Yeah, see that? Nice quick swing. At least my hoist is nice and slow, so that's not a problem because the hoist is, isn't super fast anyways. So I'll just set this down, straight down, and then I'll, uh, I'll unhook it. I'll be able to just uh, move those around individually by hand. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be too hard. So the book showed, I talked about the weight earlier, the whole assembly is 1,900 pounds, and then that cover right there that I took off was 300, and then I think it was 300, I think it was 600. And these two assemblies together, or combined are 360 pounds so they should be what 150 100, 170 pounds a piece should be too bad I can uh, you know I can move them around by hand once I get get them set down and get the crane off of them I've got the, uh, I just press this down and uh, 
remove the, the retainer clips out of there. This is the one that, that heated up that drum where you could see that that drum had a hot spot in it. And I haven't even lifted this off yet. I moved it a little bit, but I didn't take it off. I want to share it with y'all. So it's the first disc. Pardon my camera work here. Uh, you can see all the materials just burned off, flaked off. Top side's not so bad, but this side here is just absolutely cooked. So lay that there, lay that down. And then the first plate is just fried. Uh, let's see that came off that wheel. Well, it didn't matter. Usually I flip flop these, so I get them on the same way, but these don't matter. Yeah, this just wore out. I'll have to look in the book, see what number they call this clutch pack, and then see what gear it is. Uh, most likely it's like a low gear you know whatever these guys are using the most with the blade either first gear second gear whatever um it's probably getting the most torque and the most use so i'm gonna look that up real quick and then go call the owner and then see what he wants to do see if he wants to uh just repair this and put it back together or if he wants to do a full rebuild so Either way, I don't care. I'll make more money if he does a full rebuild, but it's a lot of work and I've got a lot going on anyways. If he just wants to fix this, I'm happy. I mean, if it was mine, that's what I would do. Um, I might go a little further just to check some more clutches just to see if they're kind of where they have. Uh, but all the bearing surfaces look incredible in here. It looks really nice. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. All right, so I talked to the owner about this uh, transmission and um, you know, first he was thinking, let's just pull the whole thing apart and go through everything just because it's so hard to get this transmission in and out of the machine. And then he called me back this morning and said, you know what, let's just do a sample one more clutch pack and see how it looks. And if it looks good, then let's just repair what's bad and um, reseal what we have to and put it back together, which totally makes sense because it's a low hour transmission. Everything looks beautiful. The bearings are beautiful. I mean, everything, all the other clutches I've looked at look beautiful. They all mic out way, way, way with intolerance, almost brand new. That's clutch five, the one that went bad, the one that, you know, a, you can see the hot ring around there on that drum. And it works in third gear, it works in fourth gear, it works in eighth gear, it, it's engaged in neutral, it's engaged in third reverse, sixth reverse. So basically th this clutch is engaged in, you know, third and fourth, which are your, probably on a, on a motor grader, I'd say that's probably the hardest working gear. Um, you just imagine someone running a motor grader, right? Um, if they're in first or second gear, they're probably barely on the throttle. They're not pushing very hard. They're doing real fine work. If they're on a haul road, they might be in fourth or fifth probably, but they're not, I don't know, they're not doing that a lot, but they're just blocking stuff out, right? They're just running the blade. And third, fourth gear, from whenever I've run a blade, that's kind of when you're working at the hardest. So what I'm gonna do, and that's a small pack. That's a really small pack. It's like when you're in third gear, you're in that pack, which is number five. Um, number seven, which is this, this big one here, it's got a lot of discs in it. The other one only had four discs. This one has, I think, like seven or eight discs in it. And then you're also in four, which is this pack here. This is another small one. This one is, I think, uh, if I remember right from when I looked at it, it has, has four discs in it as well. It's a small one. So that's the one I want to sample. I'm going to pull this one apart because this is the other uh, clutch pack that's, that's engaged. It's actually engaged in second gear, which is a harder working gear. I think it was second. Yeah, second gear. So I'm going to pull this, this one out, pull it apart, and see what this looks like. If, if it mics out really good, I'm just going to reassemble all this. I'm going to get the parts for that, reassemble both sides of that one, both sections. We'll put them back in, and then we're going to reassemble the transmission. Um, it's not rare for these transmissions to just lose one clutch pack. I mean, who knows why? It's just the weak link, I guess. Uh, if this thing had 20,000 hours on it, if it was just unknown how many hours on it, it was an old machine, and we saw a lot more wear on a lot more stuff, it would make sense to rebearing it. It makes sense to, to check every clutch, uh, reseal the pistons, all that kind of stuff. But at this point, why? I mean, you're gonna spend an extra $6,000 and you're not gonna gain anything. We repair this pack here, we're gonna get another 8,000 hours out of this transmission, you know, by the looks of how it's going so far on this. So that economically, that's that's the way it works. That's, that's what makes sense. So anyways, I'm gonna pull this apart and we'll see what, look, what it looks like inside and then we'll go from there. All right, so I've got this shaft out. I'm taking apart clutch number five, I think it was. Um, just one note, you know, I talked earlier about how if you follow the service manual exactly, sometimes it'll have you do things more than you kind of have to do to get something apart or together. You do want to follow it, obviously, to make sure you're doing it right. But one thing the manual shows, um, that shaft was sitting right here. 
it was kind of intertwined with this gear here and it shows and also that lower gear and it shows that you have to pull this bearing and gear off of this shaft before you can pull any of these three out and I'm looking at it going well I can pull this up with this one so I hooked the crane on this one and went to slide it up and I was gonna I was jiggling this working it with it and once I got so far that one just cleared out anyways and I just set this right back in place so I didn't need to pull this gear off that's just wasted time and then I'd have to heat this bearing up to put it back on put it back in place anyways uh, if I want to get this one out, I'll, I can pull them together too, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not sure why they tell you to pull that gear off. Uh, maybe just so you don't accidentally chip something, or maybe some people can't figure it out. I don't know. But anyways, I pulled this apart. Um, so far, it looks pretty good. I Let me set this little camera up on a tripod. And see if I can put it somewhere where we can do this. I'm going to pull these discs, and I want to mic them. Uh, the, the standard tolerance, the, the original new tolerance of these is, is 160 thousandths. And look, it's right at 159.5, so it's only got, what, five ten thousandths wear? It's nothing. This thing's almost brand new. So I'm gonna, I'll mic the rest of them, and uh, as long as they all mic that good, I'm going to go ahead and just start ordering parts that I need. Because I know I need those discs and plates for number four or five, whatever the number is. I, uh, number four or five, I need to order those. And then I need to order some sealant for the case. Uh, I'm gonna put a, a new seal on the output flange. You know where the output flange goes, obviously. Uh, you know, the lip seal so that that's good. And uh, there's some other stuff too. There's some O-rings underneath these uh, seal manifolds. Um, they have O-rings. The ones that I took off, I'm gonna go ahead and change those O-rings as well. I'll inspect these seals as well. So far, what I've looked at, they all look very good. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they're not they don't really wear I mean, sometimes they do but it's only if you get a lot of metal debris in there um, or if it gets real hot and they melt i possibly will change those on the one clutch pack that we uh that did burn uh just because it got a lot more debris through that obviously and then i'm going to check that out uh you know closer i'll check them out well i'll check them out all out close but those ones i'll i'll pay a special attention to um so i might change those anyways other than that, um, I'll get all the parts together. I know some of the discs are on back order just to the local warehouse, so it'll be like Monday or Tuesday before I get them. And then once I get all the parts, I can start uh, putting this all back together. Actually, I'll probably put these, everything I can, I can put together today. And then once I get that, I can uh, put that together. So I'm just gonna do this first video on what I've done so far on taking this thing apart and kind of triaging what's wrong. Uh, kind of, you know, what I'm explaining about what, you know, what how we how we're repairing this one and why we're not doing a full rebuild and all that all this is just gonna be this first video and then uh when i go to reassemble it i'll do that as a second video so um anyways thanks for watching um i really appreciate you guys watching i really appreciate the comments because then i know um that you guys are you know watching my stuff and also it helps with youtube um for some reason if you guys comment more if you guys hit the like button more they'll share my video more uh, they kind of hide in a closet if nobody uh, interacts with me on them. So I'd appreciate it if just comment something. Um, I've got a couple guys that just give me thumbs up and say good job or whatever, and I appreciate that. Um, or if you have questions, shoot questions at me. I, I do answer them. And um, thanks for watching. Hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. And um, have a good day.